Hello and welcome to this multimedia series on the environment on CNC 3M Era Mathur. Over the months, our program has focused on various aspects of environmental decay in Trinidad and Tobago. One major casualty of such problems is the country's wildlife. Although originally present in abundance, pressures of deforestation, unplanned development, habitat loss, food and water shortages, and overhunting have contributed to their decimation. Poaching continues due to the lucrative prices fetched for the wild meat. This year, the problem has been exacerbated by the prolonged dry season with widespread forest fires immediately followed by the devastating floods which have destroyed countless animals and their habitats. Meanwhile, hunters continue to eradicate the fragile population with a five-month open season from October to the end of February, one of the longest hunting seasons in the world. For a $20 permit to hunt, there are some five permits which could be bought. Any of our 10,000 hunters can legally kill any number of agouti, deer, lap, wild hog or armadillo. This includes the female and the young. The Conservation of Wildlife Act was approved in 1958 and is basically a hunting act. Most first world countries and several developing countries impose very short limits on the hunting season in terms of time allowed from a few days to a couple of months. There are also bag limits where each hunter is allowed to shoot only one male animal, not an unlimited number of females and young as in TNT. Further, hunters in this country are entitled to exercise their thousands of dogs on private lands during the month of September, which is during the close season. These dogs wreak havoc on the defenseless wildlife, killing and maiming agouti and deer as they run free, not stopping where the private land boundary ends, but extending into the state forests. Regardless of whether one thinks any hunting at all is legitimate, it is plain that the present situation is unsustainable. My guests today are Buddy Miller, Vice President of the Hunters Association of Trinidad and Tobago. Welcome. And Dr. Christopher Starr, who is a zoologist as well as a senior lecturer at UB. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Buddy, perhaps I should ask you first. What does the Hunting Association see as one of the biggest environmental problems facing us right now? Habitat loss. Without a question, without hesitation, habitat loss. Uh, if you look very quickly at the Northern Range, over the years there has been an unspoken agreement as to where and where not quarrying would be allowed. Mm -hmm. And the unspoken rule, one of the unspoken rules was that between the Valencia Junction and the Toco Main Road, the quarrying would take place only on the southern side of, the, of that road, not on the northern side, not going up into the hills. If you go now into Guanapo, heights of Guanapo, they are demolishing that mountain. They are doing just what was done years ago to the San Fernando Hill. They are taking down that mountain. It will come down, the watershed will disappear. It is in the process of disappearing as we speak here now. Okay. If you go through the Blanchish's Road, starting from Arima, you get into Verdon Vale. Right in the little area of Verdon Vale, there may be five major quarries. Hmm? Uh, including the Sunway Quarry, uh, people may recognize that name. And again, right over the Azerite Nature Center, there is a whole mountain that has been coming down over the last year or two. Right, well, we, we, we actually want to do a separate program on quarrying, but uh, now I'd like to go to Dr. Starr. Dr. Starr, in addition to some of the points raised by Buddy, what do you think are some of the major environmental issues facing us? Well, first us? of all, you, you've outlined very well what the problem is. And uh, Buddy is, is quite right that habitat loss is a serious thing. But he and his organization, I think, are misdirecting us in focusing on that. It's a factor, but I don't believe it's anywhere near the major factors. The major factors you outlined yourself. The absurdly long hunting season and the sale of commercial wild meat. If something can be done about that, then it will do a great deal to alleviate the problem, and I cordially invite Mr. Miller and his crew to come on board on these. It should be in their interests to uh, help the recovery of, the, of, of wildlife through these two key measures. Okay, buddy, let's talk about the Hunters Association of Trinidad and Tobago. How many of you are there? Well, altogether, we 
run between 15 20,000 of us. And you're all registered with the association? Yes, yes, yes. What do you make of this very, very long hunting season? Do you think it's, the, it's good? The, it's the very, very long hunting season, in fact, has been shortened at the initiative of the hunters. In law still, the hunting season is six months. We, in 1987, volunteered to give up the month of March. And to today, there is no legitimate hunting in the month of March. We did this. What you do have, however, is the 12 month a year, 365 days hunting by the poachers, by the trap gun setters. One man setting out, as I'm told by one guy, he says he puts out 21 trap guns in the forest, three rows of seven. That's 21 guns on duty 24 seven. Every night, every day, four, five, six animals are going to fall. He also then confesses that when he goes in in the morning to harvest what he's shot overnight, mm -hmm. he can take only as much as he can carry and the rest are left on the spot. Well, I want to come back to that whole question of poaching. Dr. Starr, what are the um, animals that are hunted regularly here? We don't have any large animals here, but well, we have the smaller ones. <coughs> I, I, ones. I think the, the data on that are quite, quite plain. Uh, this year, I believe about uh, 10,000 licenses in total have been issued. About half of those are for agouti. Uh, the, um, the, the average number of take per agouti is, uh, is about four per license. For the others, the, others uh, the other half is spread among those other four uh, species that you mentioned, and the numbers are much smaller. So that the uh, death toll is mostly in agouti. What was it like 20 years ago? Uh, I only, um, <coughs> Mr. Mr. Miller is a, is a longer term uh, immigrant than I am. Uh, I only immigrated 18 years ago. Uh, it was somewhat better, but um, the long hunting season and the sale of wild meat has, uh, has, has chipped away consistently. And uh, I'm afraid that whether Mr. Miller and his crew like it or not, we are facing a situation where a new hunting ban, such as was introduced in 1987, may be necessary because the conditions you will recall, we're very similar to what we have today. Uh, it's, it's getting to where there is, I mean, I've, um, I live up in the, in the northern range, and in an average year, I'm lucky if I see one agouti. Agouti should be very plentiful. Um, they're, they're very uncommon. It's an extremely unnatural situation that we have today. And I want you to respond to that when we come back. We'll take a short break. As you watch, I want to remind you to send in your comments and suggestions to cleaningupthemess at guardian.co.tt. This is an environmental special on CNC3. We'll be right back.